Hi, welcome to Iguazo Cloud Tutorial. My name is Adi Irstein, and I'm here to walk you through how to get started with Iguazo platform. So first of all, what is Iguazo? Iguazo is an application development platform with microservices, function as a service framework, and a very robust data services. The platform enables customers to build intelligent applications with real-time capabilities and provide a development environment for data science exploration, training, and deployment. Essentially, we're providing all the must-have building blocks for what we call next-generation application. And this is what I'm going to show you in this tutorial. Now, you can use Iguazio as a managed service running in the cloud. You can choose between running it in Iguazio account or in your own VPC on your own clusters. So let's log in with my user. So this is the, uh, the main dashboard of the product. Let me just give you a, a high level of what we have here and then we'll drill down to each and every service. So we have data services. Iguazio has a, a multi-model database that support all kinds of data structure. For example, time series, key value, object files and streaming. So this is where you manage it. To explore the data, we have a built-in Jupyter notebook. It's almost like an IDE very convenient for data exploration and manipulation, very popular among data scientists and data engineering. We also have our own function as a service. Uh, we call it uh, Nucleo. It's a very robust framework for developing uh, event-driven application, kind of similar to Amazon Lambda functions, but much faster with very rich functionalities and obviously running anywhere. So it's not just uh, Amazon. Uh, we also have a bunch of uh, services, managed service uh, in the platform. This is where you manage all those microservices here running in the system. They're all, by the way, running on top of uh, Kubernetes. And if you're a CLI guy, we also have that as an option. And last but not least, we have a built-in Grafana that is already integrated with our data services. Let's go to the data services. The data in the platform resides in what we call a data container. So I'm just selecting my container here. And the unique thing about it is that you can store different types of data and yet have a single pane of glass to view and manage everything. So in this case, you can see a bunch of different uh, tables and files. This is a, a stocks table. If I drill down here, I can see its record. It's actually a key value table. And when I stand on a specific record, I can see its attributes. Attributes are like uh, columns in a rational, relational database. I can also store time series data here. I can see my streaming going on. And I can also store some you know, simple files like uh, CSV, for example. Now, the, the unique thing here is that under the same container, I can see different types of uh, data structure like time series, key values, streaming, you know, simple file and objects. Usually, you need to store them in a different databases, different data store. In our case, everything resides under the same single pane of glass. Now, I can also view the uh, performance metrics in my container, and I also have a very extensive security uh, policies, so I can actually uh, set up policies based on user, groups, IP, uh, and all kinds of uh, parameters. So now let's drill down to the uh, services section. This is where you manage all the services in the system. All those microservices and running on top of Kubernetes. As you can see, we have uh, Spark for Analytics and Presto for SQL and Shell and Prometheus for Time Series and, and many other services. And we've been taking care for the integration with the data platform, monitoring, logging, and all the security aspects. So, for instance, if we go to the uh, Spark UI, it's going to take me to the, uh, the Spark dashboard where I can see my Spark jobs, and I can only do things based on my user permission. We know that many customers are struggling to build an environment with microservices running on top of Kubernetes with security and monitoring and logging in place, we already sorted it out for you. You don't need to take care for that. It's built in in our solution. By the way, in the next version, you would be able to deploy custom services as well. So let's go to Jupyter Notebook. So this is actually where you spend most of your time working with the system. And the easiest way to get started with Iguazio is to read those tutorials. 
So just go through this welcome page and you can see a bunch of links that will take you to different notebooks. So let's go to this uh, getting started folder. Uh, you have lots of uh, notebooks here that basically explain you how to do some basic stuff with the system. So for example, how to uh, manipulate data and read data from another source like uh, S3, how to take it into Iguazio, how to read it uh, into uh, Iguazio key value and so on and so forth. We also have a, a library called uh, Frames. This is an Iguazio library for high performance data access. It provides you an access to our time series, key value and streaming. So it's very, very convenient to work with, very similar to, to the Pandas library. Uh, we also have a notebook for Spark. So if you're a Spark guy, you have a you know, bunch of examples here on how to use Spark data frame, how to load data from uh, AWS into Iguazio using Spark, how to manipulate the data, convert it to Parquet and so on and so forth. Uh, if you want to use Parquet, then we have a notebook for that as well, reading and writing from uh, Parquet files. And if you want to load data from a SQL database, in this case uh, MySQL, you can see uh, an example for that as well. And you can see how easy it is actually. You just need to set up the uh, connection and uh, you can basically leverage frames in order to write it down into our key value. So those are the uh, getting started notebooks. We also have a demo application, it's called Stocks. It's basically an example application that shows how to read data from a stream, write it down to Iguazio's time series data, as well as key value, and how to run your logic. In this case, we are running a sentiment analysis to figure out the market sentiment for specific stocks in real time. So it comprises of two notebooks, the read stocks and the, uh, the read tweets. And you can take a look at the code later on. It's, it's a good example of an end-to-end -end application. Another interesting notebook that we have here is this uh, Explore notebook. We have a bunch of examples here showing how easy it is to read data using all kinds of common APIs. So for example, I can read the stocks table using Spark data frame, but if I'm not a Spark guy and I want to run some SQL, I can do that as well. And you see, I don't need to set up anything. I just do SQL and that's it. I can also use uh, data frames and pandas data frame. So it's extremely, uh, extremely convenient. I don't need to go to different clusters or different databases to do that. I don't need to move the data around. Everything is handy here in just one place. So the other thing that I can do is I can take the code that I've been reading here in the exploration phase and simply convert it to nuclear function. Now, once it's converted, I can actually run the same code in production pipeline based on event triggering. So let's see how it looks like in Nucleo. So now let's take a look at uh, Nucleo. So Nucleo has this uh, notion of uh, projects, so I can create my own project. Let's go to the uh, stocks demo. This is the, the application that we were talking about. And here I have a bunch of uh, functions. This is the uh, read stocks function. Essentially, if you look at the, the code here, it's the same code that we've seen in uh, Jupyter. It's exactly the same. You didn't need to convert anything here. Now, uh, I can write my own code here and I can use this interface uh, to, to write the code, but I can also bring my own code from GitHub. So if you're looking to work with a CI CD, we can do that as well. We also have the uh, option to configure all kinds of uh, setup, all kinds of setting, environment variables, labels, annotation. You can uh, put your own you know, pip installs to be part of the deployment. Triggering, we have a bunch of uh, triggerings here. So you can actually uh, select if you want to trigger the uh, function based on Kafka or RabbitMQ or HTTP. You know, lots and lots of uh, options here. You can take a look at the status and you know all the uh, configuration and the manipulation and the deployment of the functions can happen here. Now if I go to Grafana, I can actually see the uh, dashboards that we've built for this uh, stock application. So uh, we can see the uh, key value information here, we can see this time series data, the sentiments that are coming from Twitter and the sentiment analysis. So it's just a nice example of 
how easy it is to build uh, dashboards on top of our Iguazo data services. So that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, just feel free to ping me at adih at iguazio.com.